If the main purpose of our text is to inform, instruct, persuade or entertain, then I would say we could all agree that Darwin aims to persuade. Just exactly what is it trying to persuade us to believe? Let's start at the beginning. From the very start of the film, it reveals its twofold purpose. Let's destroy one of Australia's first fake news stories and return an island to its true name. These two phrases represent the context of the Butchler people in the past, the present and the future. The Butchler context begins with Eliza Fraser and it's important to know how much impact her story had on the collective conscience of Australia. After Eliza was rescued from the island, she was taken to Sydney and her story appeared in newspapers. The story, which was sensationalised, particularly concentrated on the report that Florida's clothes had been taken and there were violence committed against her. Later, all the Charlotte Barton here wrote a short account of the story as a warning to young children called A Mother's Offering to Her Children. And she was the first of many authors, composers, painters and directors here who have been captivated by the Fraser story. Even our best known artists like Sidney Nolan and Patrick White popularized the story and portrayed the idea of white femininity, sensuality and vulnerability in the face of savagery. Yeah. But those who were portrayed as uh, the savages and the beasts of the story never had a chance to portray their version of them. The Butchula people still live on their own home and they had native, native title restored to the island in 2014 and they have been fighting to have its original name restored as well. These people had their population numbers decimated to just 170 people after the Fraser story gained a national foothold and have good reason to want their story to be told. To them, Eliza's story was of cross-cultural ignorance, miscommunication, fear and racism and the terrible results that came from that. Their stories have been recorded by Larissa Bernhard from the University of Queensland, who recorded the oral histories of the Butchula people and its corresponding encounter in the Fraser story. Her research shows that the Butchula people were trying to help Fraser, but Fraser's fear and prejudice did not let her day their help. Much of the documentary continues to challenge the dominant Fraser story through symbolism, juxtaposition, colour, emotive language and music to overturn the Fraser narrative through its unsympathetic portrayal of Fraser compared to the natural and therefore harmonious removal of her words to return to the Butchler perspective. However, near the end of the documentary, the purpose widens to challenge all perceptions and characterisations of the Aboriginal people that were represented through Fraser's words. For Fraser's words were not just words, not just a story, and not just a passing sensation. They helped create and enforce the negative stereotypes of the Aboriginal savage that was rampant in colonial times and were part of the justification of severe atrocities and acts of genocide that were performed against Aboriginal people. Still today, nearly 200 years after the event, the Butchula lives have been on a trajectory based on those words. No wonder they want to wash away her words and her name as well. Imagine living in a place named after someone who despised, degraded and destroyed your ancestors. On the flip side, imagine waking up to a name that means paradise. As the documentary draws to a close, it returns to the present and the actions people want to have now. The Butchler people are like Aboriginal people across Australia who have been campaigning to have white Australian names changed to their original. This is particularly important when those names have been fundamentally harmful to the people of that area. Think about it. There are names like Jim Crow National Park, Black Jim, Murdering Creek and Skull Holes. Look at the Aboriginal painting here. Are related to the story of Murdering Creek? These are not just names and they are so obviously bad that it will be hard to have anyone disagree with changing those names. Other names associated with people who were responsible for massacres such as Batman in Melbourne and Macquarie in Sydney find less of a foothold in the wider public. Sacred place names like Uluru take decades of campaigning to change public opinion. Gary is one such sacred, sacred place and the documentary is part of the appeal to the public to change its name. Which brings us to the future, which brings us to you. 
you are part of a generation that is willing to address changes because you are a generation that is engaged, educated and sympathetic to the importance of Aboriginal connection to land and place. The Bushla people present their own name for the island using juxtaposition and emotive language. It would be hard to find anyone that did not act like a piece of sand and vote in the concluding section of the video. Here is your task about this. You are to use this table to fill it in. There are two different sections that you need to address. The first is finding the balanced perspective of Eliza Fraser's experience. You need to find quote images and techniques that balance that perspective and the effect it has on the responders. The second part is you need to um, see where they are persuading people to change the name of Fraser Island to Gari. Again, find quote images and techniques and let's go to the effect. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay.